last week we did, we talked about equivalent fractions. So we're gonna focus on the right-hand side for right now. So if someone can tell me, um, what is the, if someone can give me an equivalent fractions for four over seven. Go ahead, Madison. Um, equivalent fractions for four over seven is what um, we can do eight over 14. Okay. And then the next one that we can do is 12 over 21. Okay. And 16 over 28. Okay. And could you tell us pre briefly how you got to those answers? Um, how I got the answers was that I, for 8 over 14, I multiplied by 2. And then for 12 over 24, I multiplied by 3. And then for 16 over 28, I multiplied by 4. Okay, great. So just to be technically accurate, you were multiplying by 4 over 4, right? Mm -hmm. And for 12 over 21, it was 3 over 3. And 8 over 14, it was 2 over 2. Um, so it's important that, we're, that we make that distinction because if we multiply, let's just say 8 over 14, and let's say we multiply by 2, that's going to give us 16 over 14, right? Yeah. Which is not what we I'm... want, which is not equivalent, right? So we don't necessarily yeah. want to do that. But we want to take the 8 over 14 and multiply it by 2 over 2. And now that gives us 16 over 28, okay? So just, so just again, it's important to be technically accurate, um, even though I completely understand that you understand what you're doing. And, and again, the, the reason why we can do this is because when we multiply by two over two, we're actually multiplying by the number one. And anytime we multiply a number by one, it gives us the same exact number. So that's really important to, to be aware of that we can multiply any number by one and change the way it looks, um, but it's still equivalent to that original number, All right, which is what we're doing. All right, so next one, 21 over 30. Anyone volunteering for that? Or should I just go ahead and do what I initially took, wanted to do is pick people to do it. So we have Maddie on that. So Justin, can you give us 21 over 30 in simplest form? So, uh, I don't really understand the um, simplest forms. Okay. We try to do it on the homework, but I don't really think it's correct. But I can okay. show you my answers. I can tell you my answers of what I got. Well, so, so just tell me, which one? which one did you try to do? Uh, I did both, but I don't think they're correct, but I'll, I'll try to see. Um, something in common with 21 and 30 is 3, so divide both. 3 divided by 21 is 7, and 3 divided by 30 is 10, so is that correct? That's perfect, Justin. Okay. So you actually do know how to do this, all right? So you found a number that both numbers could could be divided by. So we, we call that a factor. So you found a common factor of 21 and 30, which was three. And then you divided both numbers by that common factor to get seven over 10, all right? Um, Ariana, can you do the next one? We wanna write three and five eighths as an improper fraction. Um, three and five eighths as an improper fraction is is twenty nine over eight. Okay, and can you tell us how you got that? Okay, so how I got that was first I multiplied eight times three, and that got me twenty four, and then I added um the five to twenty four, and I got twenty nine. Okay, great, thank you. Perfect, perfect. So we talked about this last week. Sometimes it's helpful to put like the, you know, these little notes there so we know what to do. So we know at the bottom here, we have a multiplication with eight times three. 
And then we know up here at the top, we have an addition with the numerator, which is five. So we get 29 over eight. So, so far, so good. Um, let's go with 19 over four as a mixed number. Who's there for that? Who's... Madison Elmore. All right, for 19 over four, yeah, yeah, for 19 over four, what I did was I decided to start with my division because I, since I know that 19 over four is an improper fraction and we have to convert to a mix, I had to, had to divide. So I knew that four can go down to one, but four can go into 19. And the way I figured out was I knew that four times four gives me 16. So I would do four times five, I'll get 20. So I did four times four to 16. And then I subtracted 16 from 19 and got three as my answer. So my answer was four holes and three over four. Okay, great. So basically what we're looking at is to change it to a mixed number, uh, you kind of use the multiplication forward concept, but we usually kind of think of this as division, right? So we will take four into 19 and then we would get four and then we have a remainder of, what's that, three. And so we end up with four and three fourths. All right, cool. All right, so moving on from this, um, we now began to take a look at word problems. Who's on our, who's on our chat? Uh, Ms. Elmore, you want to try this? Okay. Um, so the one that is not the same length as the path well, first you have to turn it into a mixed number. Okay, perfect. So, uh, 23 over 5. And then you have to um, divide. So five goes into 23 four times. I mean, yeah, four times. And what's, what's left over is three. So we're not... So when you rewrite that, Madison, what do you end up with as your mixed number? Your mixed number would be um, five. I mean, no, sorry, four and three. Four, four and three? Yeah, over five. Four and three fifths. Okay, perfect. All right. So based on that, our solution would be D. Yeah. All right. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, all right, so let's see where we go with that. Okay, so before we move on, let's kind of just shift basis. So I was kind of review a little bit of what we did last time. Um, let's take a look at some more concepts before we get back to the problems. All right, so one of the things that we want to take a look at now is, is this concept of adding fractions with unlike denominators, right? And so we start with this concept. We have Jessica said that one half plus one fourth is equal to two over six, right? So I'm assuming that Jessica added the numerators together and then she added the denominators together and she ended up with two over six. And then she reduced two over six with a common factor of two. 
and ended up with one third. All right. So the question is, is she correct or is she incorrect and why? Can y'all see the new problem? The new sheet? Hello, hello. Hello, can everybody still hear me? I can. Okay. All right. So the question was so um, actually, did you see did y'all see the switch of the paper? Oh, y'all are still seeing the original worksheet. We're seeing um the other one. You scroll down. Okay, do you see a new one now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So let me just read that over again now that you can see it. So basically, we, we kind of switched over and we want to take a look at this concept of adding fractions, right? And so in this particular problem, we again, we have the Jessica said that one half plus one fourth is equal to two six, and then she reduced it and to one third. And the question is, is she correct or incorrect and why? So we want to justify this. So Madison? Um, I, I have the answer. Okay, what did um, you? I said she's incorrect because when adding fractions, you cannot add the denominator, you can only add the numerator. The only way you can add a fraction is they have like denominators and two and four aren't like denominators. Okay, so say that last part again. Um, well, I like two can go into four. It's just that in the problem right now, they aren't like the same denominator. Okay. So why, why we, so that, and that's what I want to get at. So your, your answer is correct. Why are we not allowed to add fractions if the denominators are not the same? Because usually you like mess with the problem and um, say that um, you like adding it mm -hmm. and then you reduce it. What if, they were like the same thing. You want to definitely get the right answer because if it was actually like two fourths plus one fourth, you'll be getting three fourths. And that's supposed to be the right answer because if you don't have a like denominator and you reduce into something else, and what if you had like the right problem and you can't reduce it at all? It might mess up like the way you're adding or, or subtracting in either operation you have. Okay. All right. All right, so you're strong with that, Maddie. So anyone else want to chime in? Anyone else have some thoughts on why we can't add numbers with unlike denominators? Okay, so let's just kind of look at it in terms of, you know, just in terms of what we see, right? Um, just so that we're, okay, so my dear raised their hand. Uh, who, let me see, who raised their hands? Let's see, we have. Justin. Well, mostly you can't do adding the nominators because if, if you add the nominators and when you add, it might go to like, well, it would go to a, a very low number than mostly it's supposed to go. And you're not really supposed to add fractions in, in, in you're not supposed to add denominators and fractions because the way I learned it is that if, if you want to add something, like, and it's not mostly you add the denominator, you try to make the denominator the same as 
as the other faction. Like, for example, you can make uh, one half into into two fourths, and that's how you can add. But that's not the way you're supposed to add. Okay, I like that, Justin. All right. Um, so Justin said one thing that's important that before we can add the fractions, we have to make the denominators, right? Or the sections, or if we think about this pie like we were working with last week, we need to make it equal, okay? So if we have one half, we need to find a way to cut up the pie so that it has the same number of total pieces as the other piece that we have, right? And so now we can easily see if we had one half, right? And now we cut that one half and it's based on what we did earlier, one half is equal to two fourths, right? So now we have to convert this into two fourths. And now if we take a look at it, these pieces are you know, more or less equivalent. So now that all the pieces are cut into the same size, we now can add them together, all right? So this now gives us two fourths and then we add that to the one, one fourth and we get three fourths, all right? The other way, and three fourths we know would be basically three out of the four pieces. This particular answer of one third would be way too small, right? This can't be the sum of one half and one fourth. This is like a little small piece. This right here, when we put these two together, represents the majority of the pie. This little thing here couldn't be equal to them. So, so we can prove this. So it's, it's even more important sometimes to just understand why it can't be the answer, right? Because then we know when we get to less than an assessment or a test, it helps us figure out what it can't be, right? And then we can always, you know, use um, our other pieces of knowledge to figure out what it can be. So it's, it's, it's really important to understand why this can't work, okay? Um, because sometimes you'll be tempted to just do that then. All right, so let's move on to the next concept. So given that, let's, next thing we wanna do is kind of compare fractions mentally, right? And one of the things you can think about is just the size of it um, and see if you can create a picture of them, you know, mental picture of what this fraction looks like as you compare it to another fraction. Now, we can always compare it technically, and we're going to do that in a second when we get to our problems. But just off the top of the head, is one half greater than three-fifths? Anyone? Uh, Madison? Um. Technically, it wouldn't because it's like a one half of three thirds. I don't think that ex even exists unless you use decimals. But um, I think that, uh, oh, three thirds. I think yeah, one half is greater. Yeah, I think three thirds at first. So, okay, three thirds. Well, what's three thirds equal to, Madison? Um, three thirds equals one whole. I could have heard three thirds are confusing, but I wrote those three fifths. But yeah, I think one half is greater than three-fifths, Okay, so you think one half is greater than three-fifths, okay. Um, Justin, you had your name on hand up too. What do you think? Is one half greater than three-fifths? Well, no, because if you do common denominator, um... Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so just, just, I just, without doing common denominator, Justin, just I think from eye to eye without no work, I think it's, I think three fifths is greater than I think three fifths is greater than one half. Okay, why? Why do you think so? Because, um, well, I think it's kind of low. Mostly, right. Like you could see what's going on. You could see that um, one half be greater because uh, five is 
Greater than two and three is greater than one. So I want you to think about this, right? Um, when I think about one half, right? It's like half of, again, kind of, I love the, the pie idea, right? We're thinking about a pie. So one half of a pie would be like the pie split in half, right? So coming straight down, right? Now three fifths, right? Let's think about three fifths. So that's half, right? Is three more than half of five or is three less than half of five? Ariana? Um, three is more than half of five. Okay, good. Um, can someone tell me what would have we what would be half of five? Either is a decimal or a fraction. What's half of five? Ariana. Um, half of five would be two point five. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Half of five would be 2.5. So, so three is greater than 2.5. So three fifths is greater than one half, right? Okay, so we're just doing this mentally now. Justin, you were about to tell us, um, how did you figure it out in terms of your calculation? What did you do? Well, here's... The way I did it is one times five is five. So put the five on next to the one half. And then, well, uh, oh, wait. So f two times five is 10. And one times five is five. So, and then after that, five times two is 10. And two times three is six. So the greater one is going to be three fifths. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So we can always use this concept of like the dominators. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and skip down here real quick. So just so let's just think about what's the common denominator. What's the in between these two numbers? We have six and twelve. So I'm just shout it out. What's the common denominator between six and twelve? Two. Okay, so that would be a common factor, right? So two would oh, be a common it's... factor. Oh, Wait, it comes mean... in Uh-huh. Um, 12, yeah, 12. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So let me just, so when we think about denominators or common denominator, think about multiples. Okay, so we're looking for multiples of that number. So if I was to do a multiple tree, and we'll do it for three over eight. Six over 12 is pretty simple. But for three, over, three and eight, if I want to figure out the common denominator, one of the ways I can do this till I'm really comfortable with it is I can just write out the multiples of three. So I can do three, six, nine, 12, um, 15, 18, 21, 24, and what's after that? <laughs> 27. Now, I'm going to tell you that the trick is actually usually to use the larger number um, sometimes because it'll, you won't have to go as far. So for 8, I would have 8, 16, 24, right? And so now I'm going to scan my two lists and I see that I have a 24 and for eight and I have a 24 at the three. So my common denominator, oh, sometimes we call this the least common multiple, which is also the common denominator. So the C stands for common is equal to 24. And common means that they both have it. Okay, we have something in common, All right? So what do these two lists have in common? They have the number 24 in common. So that's how we use common in math to de determine two things that are, you know, two different things or the same thing in two different locations. So we call those things common to both of those numbers. Okay. Any questions on how we find common denominators? All right. 
So let us go back to our worksheet. All right, so we'll work through the left-hand side and for the session, we got we got time. So Liam ate one fourth of the orange, then he ate another one fourth of the orange. How much of the orange did he eat in all? So someone tell me, is this an addition or a subtraction problem? All right, I see I have some folks with their hands raised. Um, let's pick, actually, actually, Mr. Ashley, I know you're, you're new. Um, what do you think, addition or subtraction? Addition. All right, what, what words in the problem tell you it's addition? Um, how, how much? How much how much of, of the orange did he eat in all? Okay, you narrow it down a little bit for me because that's like the whole sentence. <laughs> so what part of that sentence tells you it's addition versus subtraction? So then then he ate another one fourth of the orange. No, no, I want you to stay with the I want you to stay with the sentence that you read, right? But I want you to identify what part of that sentence is telling you it's addition. So that's the right sentence, but what part of it? What words in that sentence tell you it's addition? Then. Say it again. Then. So let's read it again. It says the question, so that sentence, which again is the right sentence that tells us what we need to do, it says, how much of the orange did he eat in all? So what part of this sentence or that question is telling you is addition? All. Say it again. All. All, good, all right. So that's, so we, one of the things that we're gonna be looking at when we do work problems, because I think, what, and, you know, we see this later on in, in math is that sometimes we're not clear about what operation to use. So we want to begin to understand when we see certain words, they lead us directly to certain operations. So in all leads us directly to addition because it's similar to the word total, right? So, so one of the things that we can do, we can almost kind of create like a chart that tells us what words leads to certain operations. So if we say, if we see all or in all, we know that's addition. If we see words like total, we know that's addition. And we'll see what else we come across. All right, so um, one fourth plus one fourth. So we know the denominators are the same. So what does this become for us? Justin? That because two would, and then you want to make the fraction smaller, so you divide by, um, well, two fourths is equal to one half, so the answer is one half. All right, thank you, Jess. All right, let's go. Next one. Um, I see Maddie's hand still up. What common denominator can you use to, re to rewrite three quarters and five six as like fractions? Um, you can probably use 12. Okay. All right. So let, I'll just do this one last time for anyone who may be just re recently joining us. We can always do a multiple list. So we have 4, 8, 12, and we see 6 and 12. 12 is common, so we can identify 12 as our solution. Okay.
All right, let's go down a little bit. All right, so we have next one, Zach read for two thirds of an hour and Josh read for three fifths of an hour. Which number centers can we use to compare their reading times? Uh, let's see, who else is in here? <laughs> so Shantese, Judith, Talian, Kai, can you please turn your cameras on? Um, it's Kai. Kai, you there? Yeah. Okay. So, Kai, can you take this one for us? It says Zach read for two thirds of an hour and Josh read for three fifths of an hour. Which number centers can we you use to compare their reading times? You with us, Kai? Um, A? Um, can you repeat the question real quick, please? All right, can you see it? It's on, it should be on your screen. Does it show up? Is it showing up on the screen? Oh, yes, now it is. Okay. All right, um, let's start here. So it's this one here. Yeah. Yeah, I chose a 10 fifths. 10 fifteenths is greater than 9 fifteenths. Okay. So now tell us how you got from the original fractions to those fractions. I multiplied um, each denominator and numerator by 5. So again, no, not by 5. I divided, I mean, multiplied each numerator by each other. So numerator and denominator by each other. So five times three, 15, three times five, 15. And five times, no, yeah, five times two and three times three. Okay, great, perfect. So, so Ty, you introduced another method of finding a common denominator. Can you just explain that real quick for us before we move forward? Because it is a valid method. So we didn't talk about it before, but you know, go ahead and tell us how you how did you do that again? Okay, so I'm uh, multiplying each denominator by the opposite fraction. So, um, yeah, three. For two thirds, right? I'll take the three and multiply it by five and three. Yeah, for three, I will multiply it by, I mean, for two thirds, I'll multiply three by five and three. Okay. All right, cool. So for, so for everyone, so what Ty, uh, Ty did was perfect. Like that, there is a way, another way, again, we can always do that multiple tree. Or if we just, if we like, I don't care about if it's lowest common, I just want to get to it real, real quick. I can just multiply the denominators of the other fraction with the numerator and denominator of the other fraction and vice versa, all right? And that will take you quickly to a common denominator. It may not always be the lowest common denominator, but it is a common denominator, all right? So that is that is effective at times. Um, so ordering from least to greatest, number nine. Um, Ms. Elmore, you want to take this one on? Um, which one? Number nine. Um, order, okay, order from least to greatest. Um, that one I don't really understand. Okay. 
Uh, all right. Um, so, so, so tell me, in order to go from least to greatest, what do we need to be able to know? What do we need to know? The... Oh, what do we need to be able to do? I should say, let me rephrase it. What do we need to be able to do? I want to compare, I want to, <laughs> I just kind of told you. Um, I want to see which one is the smallest and which one is the largest. I have these fractions with different denominators. I have these mm -hmm. fractions with different denominators. How can I figure out which number is larger and which one is small? By making, by making a, um, showing the fraction, like. Yeah, be more, give me a little bit more clarity. I think you're right. on it, you're just struggling to say it. Like, draw the fraction. Okay. We could draw each fraction if we had time. Imagine though it's a it's a test and you have a minute to answer this question. So we may need a faster method. What could we do? Again, we have these different denominators and we want to compare these fractions. So we got different denominators, but we need to compare the fractions. How can we do that? So Maddie, just think real quick, right? So if I had nine, if I had nine over 13 and I had eight over 13, could you compare those two fractions together? Yeah. Why can you do that? Oh, well, no, because they have the same denominator. Okay. So if I have three over five, and let's say I have two thirds, can I compare those together as is? Yeah. No, as is, as written. Oh, yeah. Really? How would you do that? You have to look at the denominators and they're not the same. Right. So then what would you do from that point? So look at this first example. You had nine over 13, eight over 13. You told me you could compare them because they had the what? Same denominator. Same denominators, right? Now you have three over five and two over thirds. You want to compare them. Do they have the same denominator? No. No. So what would you need to do to be able to compare them? Change it so they have the same denominator. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so let's go back to our problem, right? So now to order these numbers from least to greatest, what would we have to do to these numbers, to these fractions that all have change, different denominators? Change the denominators so they're the same. Perfect, all right. Now, <laughs> so now we know what to do, but here's our challenge. We got four different denominators here. How are you going to find a common one? Um, well, you would have to see the, what, um, common, well, you have to multiply, write out the tables of all the numbers. Okay, that's okay. All right, so when we do that, what do we call it? Again, remember, I'm the vocab, I love vocabulary. What are we trying to do? The list of what? What do we, when you say the table, what do you find it? The, le um, the least common denominator. Right. The common, the common denominator. Right, but what are you going to end up doing with these numbers? What are you going to list? So if I do, I'll do the first one. So if I'm, if I have six and I have six and then I have 12. Multiples. Then, thank you. Perfect. 
Let's just go one more. All right. So give me. So now for now, here's one thing. <laughs> Take a look, right? Every multiple of three. Well, let's just look at it. Let's just go ahead and do it. I'll just do it. I won't take the shortcut. <laughs> so I want you to take a look at the six list and the three list. What do you notice about these numbers? I got 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Here I got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Are they, do you see numbers in common? What did you say? Um, it kicked me out of the meeting, so I had to join back. My okay. All right, your connection is bad. My bad. I, right here, <laughs> I got you. We just so just help me out. I just want you to see if you can. I want to know if you can see this connection. Do you see a connection between these top two rows? Yeah, 24. Okay, well, no, 12. Okay, <laughs> what else? Um, I see six, right? 12, right? And 24. What about 18? Oh, and 18, yeah. Right, and then 24, right? So now, let me, so why is that happening? Because they have common multiples. They have common multiples, right? So let me, so, and this is, this is a little math type thing, right? Kind of one of those things that you keep in the back of your head, right? So three is a factor of six, right? Mm -hmm. And six is a multiple of three, right? Mm -hmm. So every value of six, three will also be able to go into. Do you see that? Every multiple, every factor of six, right? I mean, every multiple of six, six, 12, 18, 24, 30, three already will be able to go into. So mm -hmm. we actually don't even need to do three because three is already covered by six, all right? So let's go to the next ones. We got eight and four. So I'll go ahead and finish this. So we got eight, 16, 24, 32, I don't know if we need to go any further, right? Um, who else is there? Taylor, you back with us? Maybe, maybe not. All right. Uh, Shantese, are you there? And Judith, are you there? So, Madison, let me see. We got four, we have eight, we have 12, we have 16. You notice the same thing is happening with four and eight. Every multiple of four is already covered by eight. Yeah, it's the same reason with three, because since three and four is a factor of eight, and eight's mm -hmm. a multiple of four, they'll be getting the same thing. Also, a faster way of like solving the problem uh -huh. Is that if you know that all numbers are compatible by 24, uh -huh. then when you know that 4 or 8 can't go into 12, and okay. but 6, 3, and 4 can, it's much easier okay. because since you know that they all equal 24, then okay. you know your answer because um these numbers all are different in their own ways, except for like the ones that are usually paired up with, which is um the multiples and factors, which is like 4 and 8. Okay. But since um, they all got 24 because they're act actually six, well, they times each other like four times six equals 24 and three times eight equals 24. You figure out your answer because even if you do the chart, it'll still, still show 24 in all answers. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> all right. So, part of, so what you're saying basically is if you're really like comfortable with multiplication, you can kind of see this in terms of the fact that 
twenty all of these numbers are going to end up having twenty four as a factor. Uh, if you're not as comfortable, then you can definitely do the list. But even if you do the list, if you have a situation like this where you have these type of relationships, all you really need to do is focus on the larger number because all the larger num all the smaller numbers, every number that's in the larger number is already in the smaller number. Okay. So we really only needed to focus on finding the common multiple of six and eight, which gave us the 24. Now we can go ahead and let's go ahead and finish this problem. Um, so I'm just gonna ask five, six, what, what's the equivalent fraction for that? Anyone? Hey, Miss Amber. Tell me, you got the equivalent fraction for us for five six? Yes or no? Okay. Madison, Elmo? Yeah. What you got? Five six is equal to what number over 24? Five, six. Um. So how do we get from six to 24? What do we have to multiply six by? Six times four. Okay, so what do we multiply five by? To get 24? No, we have, so we have, we're trying to convert five over six to a fraction over 24, right? Because we identified that the common multiple was 24. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have to take each of these individual fractions and turn them to a denominator of 24. So if I have five over six, what is the equivalent fraction of five over six with a denominator of 24? You um, told me, go 20. ahead, 20, how'd you get that? Because um, six times four is 24. So when right. you do to the um, denominator, you have to do to the numerator. numerator. Perfect, all right, great. So we got 20 over 24. All right. Um, Miss Ariana, you there with us? I'm here. All right. So give me two thirds. Okay. So to get um, two thirds, to get th um, two thirds of 24, mm -hmm. is you would have to multiply um, the eight and mm -hmm. I mean the two and the three by um, eight. Over eight, and you would get for, and then you would get sixteen for eight times two. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Miss Ariana. Actually, Miss Ariana, you've been a little quiet. Let me get you to do one more. <laughs> Give me three fourths. Actually, you haven't been quiet. I haven't called on you enough. Give me three fourths. What you got for three fourths, Ariana? For um, three fourths, you would multiply. Four times six to get um twenty four, and okay. three times, and you would get eighteen. Okay, great. And the last one, we got five over eight. And to get um five over eight to twenty four, you would multiply eight times three, and and you would and five times three and you would get 15. Okay, great. All right. So then our final answer, I'll just do it for us. So remember when you do this, make sure you always know you got to go back to the original numbers that you were given. So we got 15 as our least, right? And then 16 would be our next one, which would be two thirds. And then three fourths would be the next one, which is 18 over 24. And then our last largest number, is five over six.
Okay. Everybody good on that? Any questions? I know that took a little bit. Um, but again, this is just one of those little kind of like assessment questions or state assessment questions where you just, you know, it, it just, the concepts are nothing new. It's just kind of putting it all together, right? So we 